Deepak talks of enlightenment. And last night he asked um, whether people believe in such a thing. Uh, one more slide. Um, I don't know. I have met Zen masters that make me think there's such a thing. I don't know what it is. But I think the idea that it's to get rid of the person that never was is, 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 is I, I agree. The person that never was is that person who really wants to exist. The one who thinks, I matter, I'm really important, I want to get more stuff, I'll be happy if I've got more stuff and if I'm more important and so on. It's that one. In enlightenment, that one's gone. But why then, when Deepak talks of the seven spiritual laws of success, is he talking about the creation of wealth? Isn't that kind of against the spiritual notion of enlightenment? Perhaps he's talking about wealth in the spiritual sense. Perhaps he means the, the joy, the clarity, the equanimity, the compassion that come about through spiritual practice, that seem naturally to, to flower. But no, he doesn't, actually. He means we can control the flow of money in our lives. It's bringing back the dualism, the me, who wants stuff, and who's going to get it. Deepak, you may be happy to call this spirituality, but I'm not. Thank you. Okay, so now I think we have an opportunity for the panel to, uh, to discuss with each other, followed by some questions from the, uh, from the audience. But I think... Uh, if uh, people on the panel might want to respond to each other, for example. Yeah, I'd uh, like Deepak. to respond. Um, <laughs> what a shock. So <laughs> last night I mentioned that the four goals of life in Vedanta are artha, kama, dharma, and moksha. And artha actually means wealth. It means money. And spiritual people should not be ashamed of being wealthy. I am very wealthy. And I have created it through my, my understanding of consciousness. And I put that money to good use. In the tradition that I come from, the first 25 years of your life is spent in education and knowledge. The second 25 years of your life is spent in making money and achieving success. The third 25 years of your life, which is where I am now, is spent in giving it back. And you know, I have a foundation that feeds 1.5 million children every day and sends them to school. Okay? And the fourth, the fourth phase of life is giving it all up and trying to achieve transcendence, enlightenment. So I'm very well on the path that I started out on. And I'm not ashamed of it. Secondly, you say, what's empirical evidence that the biological clock might stop in transcendence? Well, Susan Blackmore, who's this Susan Blackmore, but there's another uh, Susan, what's her name right now? I'm skipping. Greenfield. Elizabeth, sorry. Elizabeth, uh, the one who won the Nobel Prize in 2009, Blackburn. So Elizabeth Blackburn did a study on meditators who are regularly transcending. Within four months, their telomerase enzyme goes up by 30%. That's consciousness influencing enzyme activity, which is based on genetic modulation. If today neuroplasticity can show you that you can consciously influence the structure and form of your brain, that you can consciously activate certain genes and shut off other genes, then it definitely proves that consciousness is primary. And I am not a dualist, even though the language we use is dualistic, because that's how we use language. You know, every time you say, I had this idea, or he says the idea has changed, over time, what are you talking about? Where are those ideas? If conscious, you know, Daniel Dennett's book, Consciousness Explained, should be actually called Consciousness Explained Away. Because that's what he does. And that's what Susan did right now. 
She explained it away by saying it's an illusion. And yet, she's a conscious being who's giving a lecture. Who was giving the lecture? The whole universe is doing it. There's uh, not somebody else well, doing it. Well, that's precisely the goal of enlightenment, to get rid of your ego self. And that's what all of Vedanta is about. Mm. But I would absolutely disagree when you talk about the power of consciousness. You, you see, to my mind, you're kind of slipping when you talk about these experiments about telomerase and other experiments like that. Fantastic data, really interesting, and I'm thrilled these things are happening now. But you interpret it as the power of consciousness to affect these things. I interpret it as part of a body doing certain things, behaving in a different way. A whole integrated mind-body machine is changing. And doing meditation changes thoughts, which are just part of what's going on in here. Doing meditation has profound effects, but it's nothing to do with the power of something called consciousness. That, again, is leaping out, having a dualist view in which is, there's consciousness, subjectivity. No, you're a materialist monist. No, I'm, I'm a, a consciousness I'm a mon monist. Uh, no, I'm a neutral monist. I'm a neutral monist. I neutral? Neutral. Neutral. Neutral monist. I do not think that either is primary. Somehow we've Who's got to get Who's the I? <laughs> right. Who said we have to speak in this way in language? It is impossible to talk uh, about things without referring to the thing that's doing the talking. Uh, the I, I would say, it is that trapped by our language. We is, are. Isn't the question at basic level whether or not, uh, if I observe you, forget about the person observing, who's the observer, the observed, you can't observe yourself, conscious observing itself. I'm looking at Deepak. Okay, or any other person, right? You're wait, looking wait. at yourself. I don't know. Deepak. That's not going into a demand semantic discussion. I'm not going to go there. Um, <laughs> I'm uh, looking at this phenomenon, this physical thing that we may call a Deepak, and the question is: you're, the way you're standing, holding your shoulder down, low, the smile on your face, whatever I'm seeing. Uh, or your decision to turn just now toward me. You're reading is, consciousness. Is, is, wait. The question is, is all this a man manifestation of physical processes going on inside your brain and your body that are governed by the laws of physics, the same laws that govern everything else, uh, non-physical, non-human um, universe? Or is it not? Is there something else there? So when, when, when you turn toward me, <clears throat> was that a manifestation of physical things in your brain? Or, or was there some, you don't, whether you call it a soul, whatever you want to call it, a soul or consciousness, was there something else going on that cannot be explained by the physical processes in your brain, which are deterministic? It was an intention. I only give you A and B, and you're giving me C as the answer. <laughs> yeah, so, as a because as a, that's one of the I, definitions. I don't accept that on the test. You cannot tolerate ambiguity. You know, that's I, I, vagueness, said, vagueness, I vagueness. The definition tolerate. of neurosis is the inability to tolerate ambiguity. <laughs> okay? And that's what complementarity but, is, by the way. But pseudoscience okay? is the inability to use concrete, non vague terms, and we don't want to go there. Yeah. Concrete. Concrete is a frozen moment of attention. There is nothing concrete in the universe, it's all a flowing movement. But can we, can we use terms that are well-defined or, or By or whom? Not? I mean, there's, I don't a care tradition, who defines them. there's a tradition that defines terms totally differently than the 400 years tradition of science. Okay, do we, can we agree that there are some things that science is called the laws of physics? Yes. Okay. Can we ask where do those wait, wait, laws wait, come no, from? I'm not asking that. Why are there laws? I'm not are asking the laws that. not Deepak. structured in our consciousness? Get out with me, Deepak. What I'm saying is, do we agree that there are laws of physics? Do, yes. Do, do, okay. Do those way. laws govern? In this way. Way. Will those laws govern what, what you're going to do in the next 30 seconds or not? I think you put a magical power to laws to some laws I'm, of I'm, universe. What? You put I'm not magical. I'm not yes, magical. Yes, I'm saying. Where, where, where are those laws of universe? Where are those laws of the universe? Laws of universe? Well, I don't care what they're written. Oh, no, tell me. What I'm saying, no, no, no. Where are the laws of the universe? Why? Why? Now I'm asking, where are the laws written? Yeah, I've yes. tried this with police. Are they written in tablets? tablets? They, don't, they don't buy it. Are they, they written in the tablets come down from the mountain? What? No, they're not. You said no, but I'm saying we agree that there are certain laws, okay, that, that we've observed when we look at mountains, when we look at 
at rivers, when we look at the moon and the stars, we've, we've come up with we certain laws. Up, I don't care with. whether they're on a computer, they're in a and book, where, they're where in my mind, they're in your mind. These laws? Wait, wait. Where do we come up with these laws? That's irrelevant to what I'm Why asking you. Why is it you, irrelevant? Because it's not what I'm asking you. You, so, you what, agreed that in the next few minutes or however long it was, what's happening in your body and so on would be governed by physical principles of chemistry and physics. That's no, what he, he got he, to. Has he agreed so or not? I can't get that. Basically, he gives a yes no. No. Uh, have you agreed yes or no? That? I don't agree with that. Okay, I, that's I, all right. Okay. That it's magic, it's magic, so. magic then. So you've got consciousness. Hey, it's magic that oh. you're having this experience, which okay. you can't explain. You cannot explain how you're experiencing the universe. Isn't that magical enough? When you cannot explain normal experience, why even go in the direction of the paranormal? Explain the normal. <laughs> I, I have to say, I have to say that I'm confused about, about the discussion. I got really confused because uh, Sue was showing us um, when she was 18 years old. Actually, I like that person. That <laughs> and you don't like this one. <laughs> no, 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 I didn't say that. But you know, she was open-minded that she was going in a certain direction. And she discovered things. And I'm, I'm sure that she's still inside you. She's, you're still, um, she's still there. Um, the question is, and I'm really puzzled by this, is because basically you agree with Deepak. You, you, you guys About agree. About lots and lots of things yeah. I agree, yes. But you agree on the most fundamental thing. You said that give up the illusions of whatever you said. And there is no such thing as the individual self, whatever you want to call it. OK, we're not going to call it consciousness. We're not going to call it God. We're not going to call it anything. But there is this illusion of what we call the individual self goes away. Well, that's what he's saying. That's what the, that's what the Eastern metaphysics says. That's what uh, all the metaphysical. So why, yes, why, why is the disagreement here? Because the disagreement comes when Deepak wants to say that consciousness is some kind of force or power that does things, that when he decides to do something, it is his mind influencing his body, which I say is getting back into the kind of dualism that makes it impossible to solve the hard problem, and one can do away with it by simply accepting, as I think Leonard would, that there's just laws, that there's just stuff happening in the way that it happens in the universe. It's all just happening. There's nothing more. There's nothing magical on top of that. There's nothing to be called consciousness. That's just just a word that we use because we get in a tangle about our own nature. If we just let it happen and stop interfering, stop being anybody, and let the universe just do its stuff, then we get out of those problems. We don't need something called consciousness that has any powers. We don't need That's where we differ. Uh, we don't need something we call individual consciousness. And I think we will all probably all agree on that. And I think that's what you're saying. We don't, we don't need individual consciousness. Now, Deepak would say, well, we need something called universal consciousness, and that's another. That, that's another. That's issue. another another issue. But Where our real point, disagreement though, you comes. I agree. You agree. You both. But, but our, our real disagreement comes about this business of mind affecting body, of consciousness doing something, because I think that just causes more problems than it solves. So yeah, we agree about a load of things, but not about. The laws of physics have now determined that I'm going to shut up. <laughs> 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 Can't you transcend them, Deepak? <laughs> <laughs>